Okay. So, we're going to discuss about the donor screening. Okay. So, this topic we'll discuss here, the different criteria in order for us then to either accept or reject a possible donor here for the blood donation in the blood bank. Okay. So, we have here the different um, agencies in our country that try to regulate the blood banking procedure, including here the blood collection, the preservation of the different blood or the unit of the blood has been, which has been donated by our potential donors. So the first one we have here, the Department of Health as the lead, agent, as the lead agency for regulating all the, the processes and program related to your blood banking procedures. We have also here the Bureau of the Research and Laboratories. We have also here the Philippine Red Cross and the Philippine Blood Coordinating Council. We try to help also us here to advocate for the voluntary blood donation program. Okay, so the patients undergoing here the donation procedure for possible na potential donor here undergo the three stages uh, when you are having this blood donor or blood uh, donor collection procedure. Okay, so the first one it undergo the physical exam followed here by the medical history and we have also here the medical examination including the test for the serological test for the infectious diseases. Okay, so we need to screen our potential donor effectively to make sure here that uh, the potential donors really fit for the donation. Okay, so screening the donor before the blood collection procedure effectively and accurately will try to protect both the donor and the recipient itself. So in part of the donor, you are doing your strict uh, screening for him in order for that to be checked if that patient that as about to donate the blood is healthy enough to donate the blood. Because like for example, if the donor here is anemic na patient, so uh, the blood donation will have, um, it will try to cause here an ill effect to the health of the patient. So pag hindi natin screen, like for example, um, hindi mo na screen na may sakit sa puso ang patient natin, so baka mamatay ang patient natin throughout the collection procedure. Another one, you are screening effectively here uh, the blood donor to protect also here the recipient. That's to prevent the transmission of your um, blood-borne transmitted na mga infections. Even we are testing, for example, for the test for your so infectious diseases like our HIV, malaria, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and your syphilis, but still, um, there's no, there's really no assurance here that the patient's not has been infected. Because uh, once the patient tried to donate the blood for that day, it might be uh, considering here that might be the patient has been infected already, but it might turn out to be negative in your serological test. Like for example, for the test for the HIV, remember that our HIV has incubation period. So usually, pag um, the infected patient that, especially prior to the or within the incubation period, is still test negative for the serological test for the HIV. That's why we are screening uh, effectively our donor here to make sure that the patient has not been involved in the activities that might put him at risk of acquiring the infection. Kaya tinecheck natin, so may sexual conduct ka ba? May surgical operation ka ba? Okay, to make sure here that the patient is really negative for the infections. So like for example, in part of your medical history, we are checking the patient here kung nagkaroon sexual conduct or surgical operation. If the patient answered yes, so you need to defer, you defer the patient here for one year. One year will be enough already uh, for if the patient, for example, is really infected, magiging positive na siya after one year. So with that, uh, checking the donor here being fit for the donation protects both the donor and the recipient of the unit of blood to be given by that donor. Okay, then we have here another one, registration. So... You need to get the necessary information from your donor, including here the personal information as to the name, time, and date of collection, address, telephone number, sex, or even, or even here the age. So this personal information provides you with the information of the patients as becoming part of the record of the patient. Okay, so age requirement, um, ideally, dapat nasa legal age, 18 years old. Wala tayong maximum age for the blood donation, but if the patient, for example, here is less than 18 years old, the patient can still give or donate the blood provided na may 
Okay, uh, consent tayo for the minor na patient natin. Okay, uh, what is important or why are, are we getting here the, the personal information of the patient? So, very important here para magiging part siya ng record ng patient natin. Kasi may mga patient tayo na tinatawag na paid donors. Although, as of now, um, the Department of Health try to encourage voluntary blood donation. So, hindi pwede na magkaroon ng mga paid donors. But there are some patient na they are donating their blood just for a certain fee or they are being paid for, for that one. So, uh, with that, since parang nagiging uh, hanap buhay na nila ang pag-donate ng blood, so they would intend to donate every month or something like that. So, if you have that registration number or registration information the patient, malalaman mo kung pa nakapag-donate na ang patient natin before or hindi. Because um, when you are donating the blood, the next time na pwede ka mag-donate is only after 8 weeks. Hindi pwede every month mag-donate ang patient natin because of course that will be detrimental to the health of the patient. We should give the patient enough time for him to replenish ang mga nadlos na blood because of your blood donation. And therefore, because of this, get information, we're able to check if uh, nagsusunangaling ang patient natin or hindi. Not unless ang patient natin, ang donor natin is not uh, telling the truth about its personal information. Another thing about the personal information here is that may mga blood bank kasi na ginagawa nila, uh, pumunta ang patient, kinukuha na ng dugo, uh, pinapawi ang patient after. So, mean to say, ang serological test for the lesser, for example, HIV, hepatitis B, or hepatitis C and syphilis, ginagawa na nila later, uh, after the patient donated the blood at nakauwi ng patient. So, like, for example, kung nagpositive ang patient natin sa HIV, since nakauwi na siya, so, this information will allow the blood bank uh, personnel to trace the patient in order for them to inform the patient na ay positive ka sa ganyan. So, that's why nagkakaroon tayo ng this registry information of the patient. Okay, then we have also here the benefits of your blood donation. So, number one, okay, by donating your blood, it can stimulate here the new blood cell production. And second one, it's for your personal health check since natitest tayo ng mga hemoglobin, blood pressure, temperature, or even mga serological tests for the hepatitis A, hepatitis B, or syphilis, or HIV, malaria, so that will allow you as a donor here to check if you are positive or hindi. Another one, donating blood, you can boost here your personal self-worth. Parang you just have the feeling na you're able to donate the blood, you're able to help other people. So parang charity work natin. Okay, then we have here the preparations that we need to do here before or prior, the day before, prior to your blood collection procedure or blood donation. So, the patients should have you enough sleep. The patient should not be taking alcohol or the patient should not be taking here antibiotics. Okay, then we have here the types of the deferment. So, sometimes the patient will not be allowed to donate the blood for the following reasons. So, there are some causes of the deferment that they should not allow the blood donation. So, we can classify the deferment here as either temporary, indefinite, or permanent. Pag temporary, the patient will not be allowed to donate for a certain period of time, usually much shorter period of time. Pag indefinite naman, the patient will be will not be allowed to donate the blood for a certain duration and much longer compared with your temporary. And nagkakaroon siya ng indefinite because you don't know here when the patient will be allowed to donate. Hindi siya nabibigyan or allowed to donate here because of certain regulation and certain restriction in particular country. It might be may mga regulation na like na pwede dito mag-donate sa country na to pero sa ibang country hindi siya pwede. So, we consider that one as our indefinite. Permanent naman, so that's the patient will not be allowed to donate forever. So, hindi na siya pwede because of certain disorders which are very, um, you know, could transmit infection for the patient like for example HIV, hepatitis B, na pag na-infect ka, so hindi siya nawawala sa katawan ni patient. And it become here your permanent, the permanent for that. Okay, then we have also here the medical history questionnaire. So these are some of the questions that you need to check, to verify, to check for the patient here for possible mga history ng patient that would also allow you to check if the patient is uh, really fit for donation or not. Number one, okay, is the patient uh, feeling healthy today? 
So try to check for the patient with the physical appearance of the patient. May lagnat ba siya? Feverish ba siya? Is not feeling well ba? If that's the case, then the patient will be rejected. Another one, antibiotic treatment or medications. So if the patient is on antibiotic treatment, the patient will be deferred here for until the patient's uh, completed the entire antibiotic treatment. Exception for the antibiotic we have your tetracycline. Tetracycline, only that, kung ang tetracycline ay ginagamit ng patient natin for the acne treatment. Tetracycline is antibiotic then, pero pag ginamit ng patient ang tetracycline for bacterial infection or for other conditions other than the acne treatment, then the patient will be there for it here for until the patient uh, completed the entire treatment. Pero pag ginamit niya ang tetracycline only for an acne treatment, so pwede siya mag donate for that. And then we have also here the aspirin. So the patient should be uh, not taking the aspirin within 48 hours or within 3 days. Okay, so the aspirin here would try to decrease the platelet count production. And therefore the patient will not be allowed to donate for the uh, uh, particularly specifically here for the platelet concentrate preparation. Okay, but if the patient is donating for the whole blood donation, even if the patient is on aspirin therapy, the patient will be allowed to donate. Pero pag ang patient natin ay donating the blood only for the platelet concentrate preparation, is taking aspirin, so hindi siya dapat i-allow na mag-donate. Pero pag mag-donate siya for whole blood, pwede pa rin siya if even as one is on the aspirin therapy. Okay, pregnant patients. So after... Ang pregnant patient natin, pwede siya mag-donate ng blood only after 9 months after the delivery. Or after 6, or after 3 months when a patient is on breastfeeding. Pero pag ang patient natin, pregnant patient ay sinalina ng blood o nagkaroon ng surgical operation uh, within the pregnancy, the patient will be deferred here for 1 year because again, 1 year is already for those, basta one year is more of, um, for those patients na nag-undergo ng surgical operation or transfusion, that might pose the patient here to put the patient at risk of uh, acquiring the HIV. Kaya nga, one year ang deferment natin. Miscarriage, okay, na nakuna ng patient. If miscarriage here occurred during the first and the second trimester, the patient will be allowed to donate. But if the patient is not, um, you know, in the current ng miscarriage here, on the third trimester pregnancy, so still the patient will not be allowed to donate. Pero pag within one or the, or the first or second trimester lang siya, naku, nakuna ng baby, so the patient will still be allowed to donate. Okay, then we have also here other deferments. So for the blood donation, the interval when the patient should be allowed to donate here for the whole blood is uh, after eight weeks. If the patient is undergoing here double um RBC phoresis program that will be allowed here after 16 weeks interval. For your phoresis program, it should be 48 hours interval. Provided that one is not more than twice in a week or not more than 24 times in a year. From your phoresis to your another phoresis, the 48 hours. From your phoresis to your whole blood is another 48 hours. But if you're from the whole blood to your phoresis, that's 8 weeks. Okay, then we have here the vaccinations. So, two weeks deferral here for the following vaccines. We have your uh, measles or your rubiola, your mumps, your oral polio vaccine. We have your typhoid fever. We have also here the yellow fever. Four weeks for your German measles or your rubella. And we have also your chicken pox. 41 to 21, 20, 14 to 21 days for your small pox until the, the scab has been fallen off. Another one, your RH immunoglobulin should have your one-year deferment. So, anti-rabies here, which has been um, given because the patient has been already beaten by okay, a dog or your animals, then this should have your one-year deferment. But if the patient has been given with anti-rabies as a prophylaxis, hindi pa siya then the patient will be accepted. Okay, another deferment, we have here 12 months. Okay, the ferment for the following. So, pag one year, again, one year the ferment, the rationale for that is the, because um, anything that has been given to you, may binigay sa katawan sa patient or nasugatan ng patient, 
regardless if this one is a minor or major surgical operation or may binigay sa patient that would have year 1 year or 12 months of permit. Again, our rationale for that is that 1 year or 12 months will allow the patient here to be tested as positive if really na infect ang patient natin with regards to your HIV infection. Kaya 1 year para sobra na siya sa ating incubation period to really check if the patient has been infected or hindi. So example for that, we have here your <clears throat> blood transfusion, organ transplantation, bone marrow transplantation, accidental puncture, we have also here sexual contact with the HIV, you'll be given a blood, basta may lahat na anything na nasugatan ng patient or na binigyan ng patient, okay, that put the patient at risk here of acquiring the infection. Or even has been treated, has been infected and treated with your nicer gonorrhea, or has been infected by and treated with your syphilis, with your treponema. Then we have the imprisonment for more than 72 hours, but if the imprisonment here is less than 72 hours, the patient will be accepted. Okay, then we have here for malaria. Travel history here for endemic area with your malaria would have a one-year deferment. So if you try to live in the endemic area for five consecutive years, then you have three years deferment, five years for the spin infected, it's been uh, symptom-free with your malaria infection. Then we have your leishmaniasis with a one-year deferment, Chagas disease or your trypanosomiasis, and even your Chagas disease. And your babesia here would have a permanent deferment. Okay, we have also here the permanent deferments. Number one, we have your Kurzfeldt-Jakob disease. Kurzfeldt-Jakob Kurzfeld disease is... Um, a degenerative uh, CNS uh, disorder that is transmitted or infected primarily by the prions. But also here, hemophilia patient, positive for the hepatitis B with all the markers, including the antigens and all the antigens and antibodies like anti-HBS, anti-HBE, anti-HBC. Another one, positive for the hepatitis C. Okay, positive for your HIV or your human T-cell lymphotropic virus is equivalent also to your HIV. Cancer patients also have your permanent deferment except your basal cell carcinoma, carcinoma in situ of the cervix. It could also have here your papillary thyroid carcinoma which has been surgically removed. If that is the case of the patient, then the patient will be allowed to donate. Another one, chronic uh, lung disease, kidney disease, and liver disease, the patient also will not be allowed to donate forever. Another one has been given with uh, human derivative na pituita uh, human pituitary growth hormone or even receive a tissue uh, transplant of the cornea or the dura mater because of the effects of the, uh, you know, the fear of your carsfeld jacob disease. On the other hand, we have also here the medications. So the Proscar, Propecia, Accutane would have your one month deferment. Your Avodart would have six months. Soriatane would have three years deferment. Tijison for the treatment of your psoriasis would have a permanent deferment. We have also here the patients who's been given a human derived na human predatory growth hormone or even insulin coming from the cow or bovine that one would have here the fear of your mad cow disease. We still have here the permanent deferment. Okay, filled in two days, Plavix and Ticlid for 14 days. Uh, filled in and Ticlid and Plavix are actually medications. We try to decrease your platelets. So try to be contraindicated for those patients who are donating blood for the platelet concentrate preparation. Another one, unlicensed medications or experimental medications is a questionable na medications it would have here a one-year deferment. Okay, then we have also here the travel history. So, uh, for those who have here the travel history for, or uh, in the UK from 1980 to 1990, okay, three months uh, travel history would have here the patient to have an indefinite deferment. Travel history to the European countries started in 1980 to the present Having able to travel for five years or more would have an indefinite deferment. Okay, now we go to your physical examination. So, if you are the one assessing the patient here, if you are the physician in blood bank, you need to check for the patient. Okay, of the presence of the anxiety, 
drugs or even alcohol influence. So, anxiety medyo natatakot ang patient. So, baka hinihimatay ng patient during the blood collection. Okay, the weight standard, weight requirements. So, you should at least weigh 110 pounds or 450 kilogram in order for you. 110 pounds or 50 kilogram or 50 kilogram in order for you to donate here approximately 450 ml of the blood. Okay, then we could also compute here for the allowable amount of the blood the patient can donate. Okay, for allowable amount of the blood, so hindi lang 450 ml depending on the weight of the patient. So, depending on the weight, kung nasa pounds ang ating weight ng patient, then over 110 pounds. If the weight of the patient is in a kilogram, so nasa baba natin is 50 kilogram. Multiply by 450, that becomes here the allowable amount of the blood the patient can donate. Then, try to compute for the anticoagulant needed. So, allowable amount of the blood na pwede niya donate over 100 times 14. Then, uh, you make necessary adjustment as with anticoagulant is because here in every uh, 450 ml of the blood, there are approximately 63 ml of the anticoagulant to prevent the clotting process. Okay, with that, pag na-compute mo na dito ang, alaw, ang ating anticoagulant needed, so depending on kung ano ang uh, dapat eksakto dito sa 63 ml, kung hindi siya eksakto, like kulang siya, so lalagyan mo. Dadagdagan mo ang ating blood pack or pag sobra siya, then dapat pinabawasan. That's only theoretical because in actual, we cannot open a bag and then remove or even add magiging prone to contamination ng ating specimen or, or ating unit of the blood. Okay, then we have also here the temperature requirements. The patient should be at least 37.5 degree Celsius or 99.5 degree Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay, the pulse rate should be 50 to 100 beats per minute. But if the patient would have here at least a patient, so 50 or lower than 50, the patient will be acceptable. Okay, for the blood pressure, so dapat ang systolic should eventually not more than 100 mmHg, 180 mmHg. For your diastolic, should not go beyond more than 100 mmHg. 